Welcome to the show, Selena. It's so nice to see you again. It's good to see you. Thank you. Well, how long have you been with Lower Cape Fear Hospice and what exactly is your role with the organization? I've been with Lower Cape Fear Hospice for about four years, mm -hmm. four wonderful years. And my job currently is that I'm the Director of Provider Outreach. And what that means is I am the clinical person, the nurse person that works with the people that get the message out, reach out to the community. Largely, my team works with providers, physicians, hospitals, nursing facilities to help them better understand what we can provide mm -hmm. with hospice care. Mm -hmm. So you are a nurse by profession. I am. Um, talk to me a little bit about your background and your education. Interestingly enough, I started out as a teacher. Really? I'm a proud East Carolina pirate. I went to School of Education and taught for seven years. After that, um, I had a baby and my nurse was so incredible that wow. I decided to change careers. That's what I needed to do. So I went to Cape Fear Community College and after that worked in the intensive care unit at New Hanover. And there I met the palliative care team through Lower Cape Fear Hospice. And they helped me realize my calling to end of life care. After that, I worked as a nurse, a hospice nurse in people's homes and facilities. After that, I worked with that same palliative care team in the mm -hmm. hospital. Um, I've been in this role for about, well, since last March. Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting story. You've, you've done a lot and it seems like you have found your calling. I have. <laughs> Finally, huh? Well, we're here today to talk about hospice care, and I think that's a, a, a little understood um, term. Um, I know that there are some misconceptions, some common misconceptions out there. So first of all, could you tell me and our viewers what actually is hospice? You know, it's a very scary word, isn't it? It is. It um, is. I spend most of my life talking about some of the scariest things people ever confront. Mm -hmm. um, for me, hospice is hope, but hospice is really a Medicare benefit. It's a team, holistic approach to care. It means that it's a big set of arms to wrap around you and your family when you're facing end of life or chronic disease. Mm -hmm. It gives you a nurse and a social worker and a chaplain to work with you to help meet your goals for end of life, whatever they may be. Um, they work with your physician. We also have hospice and palliative certified physicians that help oversee the care. Um, but hospice is that group of people that help support your family and whatever needs they have, be they for your medical needs or for your your psychosocial needs is what mm -hmm. we clinically call it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, caregivers have a, a, a big role to play and that big strain job. is um, facing end of life is humbling. And so you need a lot of support from a lot of different angles. Mm -hmm. Are there ever volunteers needed or utilized Absolutely. in this process? Absolutely. I'm so sorry I didn't mention that. So you have your nurse, your social worker, your chaplain, and you can always have a volunteer. At Lower Cape Fear Hospice, we are so honored to have 600 volunteers wow. to serve the patients in the five county area that we serve. And those volunteers can be a part of your everyday care. Uh, on our website, there are some stories that you can watch and you can see one volunteer who goes and plays pool with a gentleman. Oh. Um, to help improve his quality of life, mm -hmm. um, to help him live well. We also have volunteers that perform clerical tasks in our home mm -hmm. office to help us with mailings and, and all oh, of the, yeah. the daily things that go with, with mm -hmm. making sure that all our I's are dotted and T's are crossed. We also have a vigil volunteer program where if somebody doesn't have family or a loved one, a volunteer might sit with them in their last hours. So there are many roles for many volunteers and we're so appreciative of that part of hospice care. Mm -hmm. Some people, and, and I, kind of thought this, um, that hospice care only related to elderly folks, but I understand there's probably younger folks in this program also. There are. Everybody thinks about hospice and cancer or hospice yeah, and the elderly. Exactly. Uh, hospice is not just for the elderly. We have served children. Um, as sad and horrible as it is to lose young people, they need that care too. We don't do that a lot. Um, a large majority of our patients are elderly. I'd say 91% yeah. are <laughs> Medicare patients, mm -hmm. but they're not just cancer patients. And when you talk about cancer patients, that is 41% of the right. people that we provide care to. And cancer knows no age limit. Um, yeah. We have, you know, I think hospice is even more important sometimes for younger patients that have families and have needs. You know, if, if you're a young child and your parent right. may pass away, mm -hmm. there's a lot of coping and grieving before and questions. And at Lower Cape Fear Hospice, we are fortunate. Not every hospice has such a large bereavement department, but we have um, specialists in bereavement for children who um, can help families mm -hmm. with anticipatory grief before 
their parent and they pass away. And there's, there's lots of different ways that we can help anybody wherever they are at any stage mm -hmm. at end of life, mm -hmm. any stage of their life, rather. Oftentimes we think of um, hospice is uh, the place you go in those last weeks or the last few days, but it can be a longer period of time. Is that correct? Absolutely. There are two misconceptions that you just mentioned. One, that hospice is a place. <laughs> hospice is wherever you are. Lots of people say you go, go to, hospice. to hospice. Now, we again are very fortunate at Lower Cape Fear right. Hospice. We have a new care center in Brunswick County right. that the people and in Brunswick County. And it's beautiful. Ca it I've is. seen it. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful place of great hope. Um, and that is a place, and that's for intensive symptom management. And usually, if somebody's there, it may be in the last days or weeks of their life, but mm -hmm. people also leave that care center and can return home if they, they do better with their symptoms. Um, but, you know, I don't think people realize the full benefit of hospice if they only have it for a few days or a few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Medicare benefit is set up for six months. Um, you know, to qualify for hospice, you might have a prognosis of six months mm -hmm. if the disease follows its normal course. Now, what does that mean? What if you live past that six really? months? Really? What happens We're all then? hopeful for that. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, Medicare, is, it, it's unlimited. Um, you know, as long as you're continuing to decline or have need for hospice, it is unlimited. We've had patients on our service for over two years or so. And that would be service in their, within their home? Within their home, mm -hmm. yes, or their assisted living facility. Or wherever or in their they reside. Facility, wherever they live, we can serve them. We've even served patients under a bridge. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We really? Meet, we meet you where you are. Um, and that's where our social workers come in to try to yeah. help you find a better place to be. Um, you know, I think that even though patients may have hospice for a few days, they don't realize the full benefit. You know, when, some, when you're at end of life, you're facing a lot of things. And when you have mm -hmm. all these people coming into your home, you need right. to develop trust and a relationship. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that, that our families tell us is, I wish I had you sooner. Yeah, people wait too long. They do, but they don't know. And yeah. that's why we're here. But that's why you're here today, and, and hopefully we can clear up some of those misconceptions by having you here today. I know that oftentimes we do think of hospice and cancer, but what other illnesses might um, qualify a person for hospice A lot care? of chronic diseases. Um, we see patients, you know, I said 41% of the, our patients are cancer patients, right. but we see patients with advanced dementia. Mm -hmm. We see patients with end-stage lung disease or COPD. We see patients with heart disease and CHF, ALS, oh, I liver never even disease, thought about that. Mm -hmm. any disease that is chronic and progressive and develops into an end stage. Mm -hmm. Well, Selena, before we close, I want to make sure folks know how to get in touch with hospice, how to start this process. How does that happen? You know, a lot of times a physician will recommend, and a physician does have to order hospice, but all you have to do is call hospice or visit our website to find a number you can get in touch with us. People can, anybody can refer somebody to hospice. If you have a neighbor that needs hospice, you can refer them and say they have a need. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we'll pick up the pieces from there and call the physician and talk about those needs and see if the physician is in agreement that that is what's needed. Um, you can visit our website, hospiceandlifecarecenter.org, and find out lots of information about Lower Cape Fear Hospice and who to call, where to call. Just there, there's a bevy of information there for anybody who has additional questions. Well, great. Um, this has been a truly um, enlightening conversation for me and I hope for others out there. And I'm so thankful you were here today. And I hope to have you back again because I think there's lots more to talk about. There is. I Great. hope everybody can realize that hospice is about living well because we believe that every moment matters. Well, thanks again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.